I wonder if I'll go down well at three keys, eh? Will yous like me or think that I'm too cheesy? I wonder if I'll go down well at three keys, eh? Oh, will yous like me or think that I'm too cheesy? See, I write the songs, nae bother, yes, I do it all the time. Don't seem to have a problem with the rhythm and the rhyme. But I'm toiling with the music though, and here's the funny thing. I can barely play guitar. And I can't sing. I wonder if I'll go doing well at free keys. Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? I wonder if I'll go doing well at free keys. Oh. Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? This gig could be quite difficult, it will not be a cinch. When you hear me singing, I hope you didn't flinch. I brought along my guitar, I should have brought my synth. Still I'm glad to be here at the Banshee Labyrinth. I wonder if I'll go doing well at Free Keys, eh? Will yous like me or think that I'm too cheesy? I wonder if I'll go doing well at Free Keys, eh? Oh, will yous like me or will you hate me? Throw your empties at me when I play at Free Keys, eh? I first had the idea for the Freak Easy Showcase round about the time I was doing, I was getting booked for my show that I was doing in 2015 called Beetlejuice. I really hit the ground running with that show and it was getting picked up everywhere, people were noticing it left, right and centre and they were really, really starting to make a buzz about the show because it was unlike anything they'd ever seen before. So round about the time I was starting to get booked for it, I couldn't just get normally booked for what was like your conventional comedy nights in a comedy store or in the stand for that matter. So I was getting booked for gigs that were essentially the norm of that because it wasn't just like a normal stand-up show because it was very theatrical with its elements of changes and, and things that were going on. So I was getting booked for essentially cabaret shows and variety nights. And the variety nights that I was getting booked for, I was just loving what I was seeing because there'd be one night where you'd be being blown away by a guitar virtuoso who was also an amazing songwriter to then follow it up with a, a playwright who was re reciting a monologue that he had just written for a show that he was going to be working on to then working on to seeing some other great acts just coming out of the woodwork and comedians who were doing stuff that was different from the norm of what they were known for doing as performers and I just sat there and I was looking at all of this and I've done so many of them and I was just involved in this world of the variety night and the cabaret show that I just sort of, it just sort of niggled its way in my brain where I just went, God, it'd be great if there was like a, a punk rock version of this show that was held not in a big amplifier that all these other ones were getting booked in, but just in a regular venue like how I was being booked for my own shows. The idea then came to me when I uh, was uh, gigging extensively in Banshees and... At that time, my, I had done a Halloween festival with both Ash Price and Michael Davia. It was us doing our shows back-to-back -back on Halloween, just for Halloween's sake. 
And I just fell in love with this idea. I just went, what if there was a night that was just this? Different acts, one after another, having a laugh and treating it like it's something that they've never seen before. And then you leave being a fan of that something. And I knew that if I was going to do it, I had to do it right. The first thing that I'd done was I approached my techs, Graham and Emily, and I said, I've got an idea for a variety night that I want you guys to be a part of because I think we could bring a new show to the Edinburgh live performance scene. And they said, okay, what is it? And I said, it's a variety night, like a, like a cabaret show sort of thing, but every act is different to each other. We'll, and we'll have it like hosted in Banshees and it'll be underground and it'll be the most punk rock thing you've ever seen. And they kind of, they, they, they warmed to the idea and they went, yeah, let, let's do that. That sounds like fun. We should totally do something like that. Then I contacted Colin, who always does, who's always done my posters and flyers. He's been doing it for years. He's just brand new. And I approached him with this idea. He says, what if there was a night that it kind of looked like a, like a freak show sort of thing, like a freak show poster? And it had the old fashioned grain and that brown on it. And it just looked stainy and unreal. And he said, uh, yeah, yeah, we could totally do a night like that. That sounds like something that, that, that could be done uh, for our budget and for our, our, our resources. Yeah, the look of the posters, well, certainly the first poster for the Freak Easy, um, it was a fairly, fairly quick um, sort of process. I was, spoke to Ross um, over, um, I think it was Facebook Messenger, um, a few times and you know we just sort of rattled about a few ideas and um, the poster itself was generally based on the the old sort of uh, P.T. Barnum style um, circus posters and um, so you know we, we took a look at you know how those were sort of laid out the fonts the colouring um, and we sort of went for something in between um, that and a slightly more modern uh, style, so I didn't copy it exactly. Um, later on, um, a, a year or so down the line, we did actually do um, a couple of posters that, that really uh, took that look, um, but the, the original poster, um, it was a sort of a kind of homage to it. Um, if you will. So um, I think there was, you know, the, you had the logo itself, um, which I think was the only one that didn't have the white background on the Freak Easy text. Uh, we added that later to make it a little bit more noticeable. Um, but yeah, um, overall it came out really nicely and I think it took probably about a week total. So yeah, happy with that. So I sat down with Pip and Dave at the time when Banshees was still in their management and I approached them and I got on very well with them at the time and I said, look, I've got an idea for a show, for a night that I want to bring to Banshees and I know for a fact that at this venue it will work perfectly well. It's a variety night that takes place on the last Thursday of every month or the first at the time, like it's been so long ago since I remember when we've done it. and." Every act is different each time. And they said, yeah, that, 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 let's do it, we'll give you a shot. So, after Halloween had passed, I had another proper full-on conversation with them, talked it over, and lo and behold, my night was born, and I could safely say that I had a night ready to go in the Banshees. I know Ross can and will wax lyrical about the origin of the Freak Easy. And there is a story about how it, the, the name, the Freak Easy, it came up in banter with Mike Daviot, and it's all very sweet. I got involved in the Freak Easy because Ross found out it was a lighting tech, he knew his name was a sound tech, he went, do you want to be involved? And he went, I find then. And the rest is history, it's just evolved ever since. The name, the Freak Easy Showcase itself, came about from a conversation that I was having with uh, one of the first decks that we booked for the Freak Easy, uh, Michael Daviot. And we were talking about how what, like how I was needing a name for it. I still don't have a name for it. And there was a couple of things that was roaming around in my head. The one thing I didn't want it to be was, was this, uh, this is Ross Hepburn's blah 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 blah. 
Like, I didn't want it to be something like that. I wanted it to be completely devoid of what I was wanting to do. And uh, the, there was all these other shows that were kicking about doing the exact same thing. And he said, uh, like, you know, when, when was the last time you performed with Beetlejuice? And I said, oh, well, I just done this thing back at the Speakeasy, uh, which was a, a venue show that was going at the time. And he said, why do you just call it that? Why do you just call it The Freak Easy? Because think about it. And then we started discussing it. I just went, yeah, I kind of like the idea of that. The idea of The Freak Easy. Because, you know, we're in a venue that caters primarily to an alternative crowd. And they are seen as, you know, the freaks of society. And the acts that I knew that we were going to be booking were going to be acts that were so strange and peculiar that it almost seemed to work to have that name put in. So... I thought about it for a while and then the Freak Easy Showcase came into play and lo and behold we had the name for the night. Gradually over the years we were able to get some really fantastic acts to come perform and some acts that I was just thrilled to have on stage. We got Vladimir McTavish who when I started doing stand-up I looked up to him as like a god because he was just the pro, the pro's pro of Scottish stand-up. We got him to be on it and he loved the show and he loved doing it and that was so cool. We got some burlesque performers as well, which I never thought in a million years we could ever get a burlesque performer to perform at our night because what burlesque, like, in my head I was scared of, I'm, I've asked a woman online to come to a punk rock venue in the middle of Edinburgh to get naked underground and I just thought this is not going to work well. But they would always turn up and do it and they were always just great show stealers. We had drag queens perform, like my good friend Raina Destruction, she came down to perform a couple of times and she performed a song about horror movies on her guitar. And we had Amy Lemur who still managed to scare every man in the room. <laughs> Which I still hold that memory of her just terrifying every guy in there because of just this overly sexual presence. We had um, Graham Stewart who, if I was to ever say, there was, if there was an, ever an act that just embodied what the Freak Easy was about and what the Freak Easy meant, it was Graham Stewart. His magic comedy... And his gags and everything that he'd done on stage, I would just, if I had it my way, I would have just booked him time and time and time again because he was constantly bringing something new and hilarious to the Freak Easy. And I loved it. And there was never a moment where I got bored of an act. I was always interested to see what the acts were always going to be doing next. Like, half the time, if we were really determined, we did have some acts that would return for the show. Just because we, they would come in at last minute. Or, my other personal favorite, some of the acts just loved performing at our night. I think uh, it was David Crichton, Daniel Valraven, who said that we were his favourite night to perform at because of the no-hold-barred barrier, this night is insane sort of energy that it gives off. Max Scratchman once on stage said, uh, when he was messing up one of his poems, he said, it's fine, I'm at the freaky I don't have to worry about being professional. And that was the sort of vibe that we gave off for the show. It was like, you don't have to worry about anything bad happen because these people are going to be on your side because they want to see you do well at this show. We've had some fantastic acts over the years from poets to burlesque to drag music. Everything has happened that could have happened. Still no fire acts but that's that's more of a health and safety thing rather than a uh, reluctance. One day, one day when we can get into a bigger space, um, we will 100% Colin on fire. Colin will be on fire by the end of the Freak Easy. That's, that's the aim. Obviously, as the years went on, things did change in a lot of ways differently at that time. Uh, Emily, when she was behind the counter, uh, behind the the desk of the, freak, of the lighting rigs or something like that, she would say, I'm really getting into poetry, would you mind if I got up and told some poems? And I just went, yeah, go ahead. Feel free, we'd love to see you do some poetry. And because of that, she was able to bring her poetry out and start telling her own story through her poems, and it was awesome. Graham, at one point, he would play some 8-bit music on his uh, on his Game Boy through the, the speaker system, which was so cool. I'd never seen anything like that before. And... Uh, at the time, it was like a well-oiled machine. We knew how it worked. We knew each of the systems and how it would cog together and work together and stuff like that. And we were confident that if we kept on pushing it, we would be the premier variety night for Edinburgh outside of everything else that was going on. Because 
there wasn't that various, there wasn't a, any other kind of knight like us. Uh, the other variety nights that were going on, they were more for the established venues where they could get established acts. Whereas we were so punk rock, we were just getting people who never got the chance to really show what they were capable of doing in those capacities. We had one act uh, come up to us and their exact words were, yeah, we have a hard time getting booked because people think that we're too weird. And our exact words were, well, you found the right guy, <laughs> come, come perform for us. And that's where we met Pop Art. And that's where Pop Art started performing for us. And it was great. They just had so much fun on stage and people thought they were great as well. You know, it, it, it just felt like a warm and friendly environment, the Freak Easy, because it was, there was, we accepted all and we did not discriminate against anyone. We loved everybody individually. We cared about every performer in any sense of the word. And it just felt great to give back to a venue and then give back to an audience the sense of this carefree abandonment. And it was awesome. Um, I think it was maybe one or two shows after the second anniversary um, show. Uh, that's when Graham uh, left. He uh, moved to France with his uh, girlfriend. Um, so we did quickly recruit um, a replacement uh, for doing the sound, and that would have been Adam uh, Boosty. Um, yeah, and it was it was thankfully quite a seamless transition. As uh, a guy that you know really knows what he's doing, um, really, um, you know, down to earth demeanour fitted in quite well and uh, he's he's been the, the voice of calm ever since in our sea of chaos. I mean, I would joke about it and we would wind him up about it, but we love Adam. He was just, he's great. We love Adam. <laughs> he's more than just a little replacement for Graham. He's just another part of the team. He's another part of the family. And he's great at what he does. He provides good banter. He provides good sound. He's a great voice of God from the back of the booth as well, along with Colin. And Colin, of course, he's managed to come out into his own. He's been emceeing If I'm Sick or anything like that as well. I mean, it's all been development after development. We've had more reviews. The Facebook's been getting more traction. We've tried to be alive on Twitter. There is an Instagram that we really need to use a bit more, and we will get there once we have more acts and shows to show off. I look forward to that. Of course, we tried to do the Fringe in 2018, and, ugh, that was a risk. Um, I, I'm glad we done it, but uh, I think going back at an hour, I would have done things differently to make sure that that show ran better than how it did. Um, yeah, it, it was an it was an odd time to freak easier during the fringe. I just wish that I had concentrated better on other things and put the freak easy as the forefront and made sure that ran well than I did anything else. But the freak easy during the fringe introduced us to some incredible acts and some great talent, not just from Scotland but from just over the country. And I really loved seeing like poets from London or like comedians from Wales or uh, Acts from Ireland, and all of these guys come down and just perform at our night. And our intention was just to get all of these here so we could have like a grand spectacle of performers on our list so that if they were ever in the area and they ever wanted to perform, we could always contact them or they could contact us and we would give them a spot. I just wish that I handled it better than the way it came across because like, there were days where performers didn't turn up. There was one day none of our performers turned up. <laughs> and we had to get a room full of... We had to put on a show for this audience. And I just grabbed every single available poet that was hanging out at the Banshee at the time to come do this show. And Emily and I spoke about this. She said that went from being the freak easy to the speak easy. And I said, yeah, it, it did. It, it, it wasn't... It wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal. One of the weirder things to come out of the speakeasy is that was an idea that always kind of stayed with us a little bit, and we actually ended up kind of doing it again. Um, we had a charity night in memoriam for mental health charities and Robin Williams and for uh, the singer of Frightened Rabbit, Scott. And it was a very successful night that was entirely poets. We had a musical guest from 
Tom Coyne, but everything else was spoken word, and that was an amazing night. We'd received support from Scotmid financially to help um, have stuff to sell and give out at the show. And then we topped it off with a showing off Dead Port Society. It was a good night. Other than that, we saw some incredible acts. We saw some great magicians. We saw some great drag acts. We saw some great burlesque performers. We saw it all. And you would never expect to see this world of talent and art out there if you never thought about finding it at the Freak Easy. It was just unlike anything else. Around about the time that the Freak Easy was still going strong, it was like we were two years into it at this point. And we were about to come up to its third birthday, and at the time, other commitments had changed for me. I stopped doing stand up, I decided to quit doing stand up comedy, and I wanted to go and to really what I was always want, kind of gunning to do, which was to be a writer and director, uh, write novels, write stories, and direct horror movies. And at the time, I got a job that was beneficial for me in a lot of ways. So I sat down with Emily and Colin and uh, Adam at the time, because Adam took over Graham's job when he moved to France, and I said, I, I'm i going to step away. I'm going to step away from doing the Freak Easy anymore. And my thing was, is that if I didn't do it, if I didn't step away, I would have dragged the show down with me. And my thing was, I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't kill it. It needed to stay alive. It just needed to be a thing. So when I handed the reins of the show over to Colin, Emily and Adam, they said, don't worry, we will not let it die. And I told them all that I loved them individually. And I let them do what they wanted to do with the night. And thankfully, despite how the last few years have been, in the world sense, they've kept it going. They've kept the dream alive. And that's all I can really ask for, really. Ross leaving was a bit of a shock. Um, it, it came as quite a surprise to, well, certainly to me. Uh, I'm not entirely sure um, how surprising it was to uh, Adam and uh, Emily. Uh, but yeah, his, his departure was quite sudden. Um, I think uh, the last show we did with Ross was uh, November, uh, it would have been 2018, um, we didn't do a Christmas show, um, he did work in a church at the time, um, so said he was too busy, which was understandable, uh, and then he announced his departure in January, which I believe was the first week. Um, so yeah, after the initial shock of the announcement, uh, myself, Emily and Adam got together uh, in Banji uh, in an evening to talk about what we were going to do with the Freak Easy. Um, and we decided, um, after a little bit of back and forth, to continue um, with it. Um, and we would just see how we could um, move forward with it. Um, the first thing we did uh, was um, slightly change the name. We wanted to create a specific divide between um, the previous era and the new era. So we changed the name from a showcase to a cabaret. Um, changing it to cabaret, we thought it would probably attract um, slightly more um, sort of diversity in acts and that sort of thing. So. Um, and it has it has worked, um, so that was that was good. Um, and we changed changed quite a lot of the sort of um, background structure, like the way the way acts were contacted and booked, and uh, sort of spread it out uh, between the three of us. So it was a little bit more involving um, with everyone. And yeah, it's 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 nice, nice and easy transition. It was a pity when Ross did leave. Um, he left some very big shoes to fill. He's a size 13. But the three of us working as a team, we got there. We got there and we've gone from pillar to post. We've built up strength. We've had some fantastic acts. We've had people from 
TV, Australia. We've even had someone for Fife. That was really impressive. Um, and they only had five fingers on each hand. It was a Christmas miracle. But we've done well. And I'm proud of where we've come from. And I'm proud of where we're going. And once we get through these lockdowns, we will be back. And we'll be putting on bigger and better shows than ever. The first freakies after Ross left was an interesting one. Um, we opened it with a special video montage, which ended with Ross isn't dead. He's just gone to be a verger at a church. So he's just dead to us instead. <laughs> and I'll, it was all meant in jest, and Ross fucking loved it. Um, we all loved it. We all understood the joke because we are all just the best of friends. Um... I think that helped to usher in the new age of the Freak Easy. And we'd still have Ross back, certainly, um, doing one of his stories or even showing one of his films that he's directed and written. Um, we'd love to have him back to do something. Um, yeah, the first Freak Easy cabaret um, after Ross left. Um, we were, I would say, pretty nervous about it. Um, just basically because we were um, wondering if anyone would turn up uh, at an audience like. Uh, thankfully they did. Um, the lineup for the first one um, was um, really, really good. Um, we had, um, let's think, uh, Sarah Norman, uh, she did comedy, I'm pretty sure she was the opening act as well. Uh, we had Lloyd Robinson uh, doing poetry, uh, spoken word. Um, Ash Price was doing magic. Uh, we had two musical acts. Um, they were Ernesto Fernandez um, and Pop Art. Um, and I think that was actually Pop Art's last gig before Ben moved to Hong Kong. Um, and we also had Amy Lamour doing drag, so uh, nice, nice mix, and it went really well. Would I come back to it? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Um, I don't know what I would do it though. I mean, like, I would like to host it again, sure, obviously, and I would like to just have that atmosphere back. But I don't know. I think I'm far removed from that person that I was years ago to who I am now and not to say that I don't what like I didn't like performing at Freaks because I loved it that was my child that was my baby like I, that f worked perfectly for all of us not just me but for Emily for for Colin for Graham for Adam for, for all of us and it's one thing to sort of stand there and look at that world and go yeah this was what we've done we created this we've done this and I'm I'm happy that it's there and I'm happy to let it do its own thing and I'm happy to like if I was to go back to it it would be welcome back with open arms and we would still we would carry on as if nothing happened you know I'd walk back, back on stage and I'd be like well guess what I missed out on eh? and it would be that but that's fine I'm okay with that I'm fine and and I know that the Freak Easy is going to continue to be strong and growing, regardless of what the world is going through. Because at the end of the day, the Freak Easy Showcase, the Freak Easy Cabaret, the name itself, it's unlike any night you'll ever have. It is the premier alternative variety night. And I don't think you will find, for an entertaining show as good as us, or as, in, or as bang for the money as us, as you will anywhere else and see such a large repertoire of acts that you will leave, you'll enter not knowing anything about, and leave becoming their biggest fan. In terms of the future of the Freak Easy, obviously the um, coronavirus lockdown um, kind of chucked very large spanners in the work, um, works with everyone. Um, so we have now been just over a year away from um, doing any shows, that sort of thing. Um, we're not entirely sure when we're going to be allowed to 
um, get back to doing it again, but we, we will, um, whether that be in May, June, October, November, that sort of thing, uh, we definitely will record again. Um, I've got a fair idea of who I would like to have for a, a return show, uh, but um, obviously uh, Emily and Adam might also have some alternative ideas to that as well. Um, but yeah, um, we we left it in a good place in February last year um, and nothing's changed. Um, so when we go back we're going to be still in a good place and hopefully carry on from there. It all started way back when, when I got involved with the Edinburgh Horror Fest. I wanted to do a couple of solo bits and pieces, working on things like playing on the concept of theatrical seance, adding video, video and audio elements to a live performance using a projector behind me and having all kinds of weird stuff going on. Me yelling at my own voice being like layered over myself in a ghostly way. It was all very creepy, very fun and a good laugh. And through that, I actually met a couple of the Freak Easy team and so I met Emily, I met also Ross and we just got on quite well. I said I had some other stuff I did in my spare time, I did like you know comedy and poetry and bits and pieces, they asked me to just bring something into one of them, have a crack at it and see you know if I had the right kind of sort of thing for it. And my stuff was so amazingly, bizarrely random that I kept coming back and it's been great and I really want to do another one. Uh, so I got involved with the Freak Easy a few years back and it was one of the best gigs I've done because one, the name just calls to me because, hey, she's a freak and she's easy. <laughs> but also, um, on a very serious note, it was just, it was just a great uh, show. They treated us all very well. Um, a lot of places that were asking drag to come along and do their nights were just kind of like, well, just chuck in drag, because why not? And Freak Easy was actually very welcoming and very like, okay, do you need this, do you need that? It was just very welcoming and very like, you know, it was a, it was a safe space um, because I was used to performing in, in the gay scene. Um, and... To go out with that, I was like so nervous, but actually it was just so much fun and it always is every year that I've done it. Um, yeah. I, uh, I first did the gig in Christmas 2016. I love it. It's a whole load of fun. I can't wait to get back there with you guys when we finally reopen. In the meantime, I'm, uh, I'm on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch every Thursday night at 8 o'clock with the Edinburgh Free Festival, the Laughing Horse Free Fringe. We do a show called The Thursday Show, 8 o'clock every Thursday night. Um, it's such a weird performance show. It's always such an incredible time. Um, I definitely remember getting introduced on stage as uh, Edinburgh's sexy Sylvia Plath or something like that, which is bizarre, is, is uh, funny. It's probably one of the nicer things I've ever been called, to be honest. Um, I got to see some incredible people perform, some great burlesque. Um, yeah, and just, there's just a lot of really weird poetry. Um, it's a real free-for-all and that's what I love about the Freak Easy. Well, actually, I had invited Ross along to do one of the shows I was running in Glasgow when I was trying out some of the early material for what would become Hector Creeping's Book of Despair, my solo show. And Ross invited me to um, come along to the Freak Easy at some point and we sort of went along from there. How did you first hear about and get involved with the Freak Easy? And you told me. You told me. <laughs> And I think Colin told me. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that, then. Yeah, and, well, um, no, we've known Colin you... since, uh, since, since back at the Sterling Uni days. So when we go mm. way, way back there. Um, so let's, let's say word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Colin tells us. Mm -hmm. There you go. So Colin tell, told us, uh, and we, we came, and um, we made a mess. We came, we <laughs> saw, we scared. 
<laughs> I first got asked to do the free easy when I was doing um, my first fringe run and uh, they asked me if I wanted to do uh, a little spot and then obviously advertise the show after. Um, really enjoyed it and um, kept coming back. Um, I'm Edinburgh based so I think I go back about once or twice a year now um, and it's always always an experience. Oh, uh, it was at the Edinburgh Fringe, I think. Yeah, 2018. I, I was working at the festival for the Pleasants and I was trying to get in open spots where I could and I had time. And I, the first one I remember seeing getting a, a spot for was the Freak Easy Cabaret, which I didn't know was like a, like a, a year long show. I thought it was just a thing at the Fringe, but I remember absolutely loving it. I loved the, loved the room, loved the people, loved the host, loved the acts. It was really, really, really good fun. And as soon as I knew then that it wasn't, just a fringe show. It was like a year-long show in Edinburgh. I, I knew I had to do everything I could to make sure I was I was performing there as much as possible. So I've only actually performed one time at Free Heasy Cabaret. Um, I guess about this time last year, sometime January, February 2020. Sorry, forgot what year we're in, what, where we're from, who we are. Um, and I, I mean, it's like, it's such a fun gig anyway. I bloody love Banshee Labyrinth. It's a great a group of human beings. I first got involved with the Freaky Easy through Ross Hepburn. Met him on the comedy circuit a few times. Really good guy. Always had some good, good, super fun times with him. He kind of reached out to me one time and says, hey, I'm putting on a cabaret now. And I think you should come along being a magician. I think you would have, uh, you would get on really well. So I went down, did the show, had a really, really good show. And uh, yeah, I've always had a good show at the Freak Easy, which is why it's one of my favourite nights in Edinburgh. Oh, I especially loved the Halloween shows. Those, those, those are the best. Those are great. Because um, like, no, nowhere else will you find a, a better collection of just fucking weird people and weird acts. But I loved it. I got to let loose uh, as my character, Dr. Bonk. Um, medieval plague doctor, he's fun. Uh, just gonna see so many other wild, wacky things. I remember um, there, there was a giant baby. I can't remember who act that was, but I remember, I remember there being a giant baby. Uh, there was Linda, and she's always she's always amazing. She's scary, scary, but she's amazing. Uh, there was there was a Beetlejuice burlesque dancer. Uh, there was a man who tried to fire a nail into his hand or into his head. It was something like that. It was, it, it was very tense, but but enjoyable. Uh, it's, it's just great. I, I, I love any opportunity we are in a, like a safe space just to fucking go wild and be as weird as you want and to watch other people do that and it's, it's fun. There aren't, there aren't many opportunities to do that in a year. So, sexy R&B renditions of children's songs, sharing the stage with pop art music and being constantly booked alongside Amy Lahore for one reason or another it just ended up happening that way and it was great and we always have a great laugh of it. Um, some Seeing some amazing poets. You've had some amazing poets on the show. I'm not one of them. I'm definitely not one of them. But also seeing some amazingly bad poets as well and really embracing the cringe of, you know, really delving into like B-movie poetry. It's great. And... It's just the sheer chaos of the thing. My, my greatest memories of Freak Easy are just watching loads of different types of acts, loads of different variations on tone, on style, people just pushing the boundaries of what you can do with like, you know, no budget, tiny performances and really making it shine. It's just the most wonderful melting pot. My personal favourite act, well I say act, it's my favourite story to tell about an act, was uh, when I booked Alex Staniforth to do stand-up horror at the Freak Easy. And um, <laughs> he, uh, he'll he tell the story differently, but I know what, I was there, I remember what happened. But Alex, uh, uh, I booked him, I said, uh, uh, Alex was doing stand-up horror at the time, which was his improv stand-up comedy horror show that he made up on the spot. It, night after night, it was always made up on the spot. It was great. And I said, would you mind doing this at the Freak Easy? And he said, yeah, yeah, no worries. I can do that. It's fun. It sounds like fun. Let's do it. So he was up for doing it. <laughs> and 
Uh, ha and like, you know, I had this thing, every act had to be there half an hour before the show started so that we could run through the order of the night and, and make sure everything was underway. And it was half eight and he hadn't arrived yet. And I'm, and I'm panicking, I'm just like, where's Alex? He, he needs to get here. This is like, he's, he's on soon. Where is he? Five minutes in, our first, uh, I introduced the show, get the show started. And Daniel Ingram, who was playing music at the time, uh, he was doing a bit more than usual uh, because we, he didn't know turn up. Next thing I know, it's quarter to nine, and I just see the door behind me <laughs> kicked open and, and walking through the room carrying two pints. <laughs> and he's down in half of one, and he's wearing a, this long black cloak dressed in entire black, going, Right, you know, let's do this. Uh, he, I go, Ladies and gentlemen, Alex, stand up for him. He gets up on stage and he carries the pint and he starts doing his thing. And I looked at my, my Graham behind the counter and just went, he, He's pissed doing this show. And he just went, Yeah, for this kind of show, you kind of have to be. In terms of favourite act, uh, that would be quite a difficult choice because we have had quite a lot of um, really, really good acts over the the past sort of few years of the Freak Easy. Um, memorable ones that come to mind would be um, a chap called Max Scratchman who um, has done the Freak Easy, I think, four or five times. Um, over the past sort of four or five years, but every single time he's usually billed as a poet, but sometimes he's been on and definitely not done poetry. There was uh, one occasion I'm fairly sure he stripped down his underwear, uh, basically did burlesque, and that was it, and he just left. So um, there's been a couple of occasions where he's told stories instead. Um, and he's, he's done mime and all sorts. Um, yeah. I could say what some of the Freak Easy crew, but that would be just brown nosing, so I won't do that. I will, however, say it's the previous two guys I mentioned before, Pop Art Music, because they were a great laugh and had a full on song about the Eurovision Song Contest for me. I love you guys. And again, Amy, who's just been such a great laugh and really fun to work with. And watching the way she works a crowd and just has a go at them is just a joy. No, apart from myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is what we're supposed to be I'm, opening it out to I, other I'm performers and being for, generous I'm in our praise. Go for, I'm going to go for Davos Valerian. Yeah, that's he was one of mine as well. Uh, he's a, he's one, he's I I love him. Yeah, I think he's brilliant. Uh, just you never know, again. You don't know what he's going to do either. And I just think he's so tremendously entertaining. Yes. As, as as ostentatious as Pop Art was, he's definitely in our very lane, should we say. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a shared there's outlook somewhere along the line. Yeah, there. so there's definitely shared outlook. So Davos, you are my man. We have, we've all compared notes on Eurovision many times since we first yes, came across paths at the Freak Easy. Uh, yes. I, mean, I, I was, I was, I was kind of thinking about this question and it's like, I, it doesn't, it doesn't feel fair to kind of narrow it down to just one act because every time I've gone to the Freak Easy, it's all been such, it's all been brilliant. Mm. <laughs> Always I mean, interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a, a few great ones that I've seen. Danov, as you said, um, Ash Price, he's, he's, he's brilliant. I saw Sarah Norman doing a great stand up set. Um, oh, I, mean, uh, I mean, just trying to narrow it down, we've seen so many. Brilliant mm -hmm. artists, so many completely different things, and it's just mm -hmm. all consistently, consistently really great. What is my favourite act at the Freak Easy? Um, oh, the burlesque shows. Um, I've seen Debbie Deluxe perform, who was absolutely incredible. Um, had a sort of comic book themed act in her set. Just gorgeous wardrobe, great performer. Um, I also got to see my friend Muzz uh, perform magic, which was incredible because you never see people perform magic that often anymore at these sort of variety nights. I think it's kind of become a lost art, uh, which is a shame because I love magic and I love the way it makes people feel. Um, I want more magic acts at the Freak Easy. The, one of my favorite people that I've ever saw at the Freak Easy was a, a, a girl, a lady called Laurie Black. I highly recommend you check her out. She's, uh, if you imagine, a sort of like a, an electro goth, uh, like Tim minchin -y sort of vibe, sort of like little Glaswegian goth uh, chick. She's just, oh, she's super, she's super nice, she's super talented, she does comics, she does music, and oh, highly recommend it. definitely check her out.
Um, my best memory from that night was bumping into bloody old Debbie Deluxe and we were on the same bill and at the time I lived in Glasgow and she lived in Glasgow, well she lives in Glasgow um, and it was just real nice just like hanging, hanging with a pal at a gig, like sick. Um, Graham Stewart would probably be another um, choice, he's a comedy ma magician, um, he's done again a couple of, um, maybe, maybe three Freak easies, um, but he's really good, and he's always he's always a crowd pleaser. Um, oh, don't make me choose. Oh, oh, so many. That's really hard. I mean, I, it goes without saying. Anyone and everyone that does the Halloween shows absolutely love them. All brilliant. I mean, I mentioned Linda before, but that that actually is absolutely hilarious. She's so wild and scary and deranged, and just you could you know mesmerizing. You you can't look away. She's so funny. Um, oh, I, I, I love Heli Costa de Nova. She's, she's hilarious. I love her humour. Uh, Grey Crosby's poetry, of course, always really resonates and really hits really hard. Oh, ca can't forget Sharo. She's like one of the best Buller stances I've ever seen. Um, just, man, just, just, just everyone, everyone, really. Is that, can, I, can I say that? Can I say everyone? Everyone in the Freak Easy has always been a really, really fun, good performer. Um, yeah, I just ah, I, love, I, love, I love it all. <laughs> it's it's no excellent cabaret because cabaret is meant to be varied and diverse, uh, but it's, it's always consistent. That it's always about expression and it's about fun. And the freaky is always fun. Um, I've seen lots of lots of great acts, but the favourite one that springs to mind was uh, a comedian called um, Andrew Sim, um, I think, and he he was. Uh, so quiet when I met him before the show, so like quite timid and I was just like, oh this will be interesting. Um and then he got on stage and he was an absolute raving lunatic, quite frankly, but um, very funny. And um I think he made two stranger audience members kiss each other, um, which is the first time I've ever seen that. And they did so willingly. Um so yeah, that was that's one that really stands out. Um as I'd like to see again, eventually. Well, obviously myself, but other than that, um, Danov Valrovan, I think that's how you say it. Um, he's always uh, a lot of fun, and he's got a big reference to Manos Hands of Fate, which I like. Um, there was Linda, um, the terrifying um, East European woman. Um, to be honest, all the acts are really, really good. It's, it tends to be a very, very good show. Um, try not to play favourites but I think the hosts that we've had and you know who you are um, have always been really the highlight of the show. So. Another one would probably be uh, Amelia Baylor um, who does um, very funny sort of um, songs, uh, comedy bangers as she, she labels them. Uh, but no, she she's been uh, very popular. I am um, a couple of times. She's done pretty easy. Um, so yeah, those those would be probably um, some of the highlights. Um, I would say, but as I said, it'd be difficult to pick at least one. So I wish I could say I had a favourite act, but all our acts are spectacular. And I know it seems like I'm just trying to be quite wishy-washy and just avoid giving a concrete answer in order to not demonstrate bias. And, yeah, maybe. No. Um, I couldn't put a label on it. I couldn't say they were the best. Everyone has been fantastic because it's, it's all so eclectic. I mean, sure, you might have more than one port, more than one comedian, but everyone has their own style and they're all pioneers of their own inventions it's hard to put a label like favorite on something like that that's just so unique every time plus you know i've also performed at the freakies in myself so can i say myself or is that too narcissistic I, I stick with my original answer i don't have a favorite act because everyone is fantastic
yeah, lockdown's been okay for me, to be honest with you. It's not really affected me too much. I'm still working my 9 till 5, which I'm so happy for. Uh, but the only really difference is now is I get to come home, I get to watch wrestling, I get to play video games and not have anyone bitch at me about being antisocial. I've been mostly festering. Uh, I've decided to start wearing my pants on my face rather than a mask because uh, nothing gets in them. Uh, apart from that, sort of went into madness quite, quite, quite quickly. I mean, from like day one, I immediately started doing a daily series of making parodies of the Boney M song Ra Ra Rasputin on Photoshop. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, you know, things like, you know, Ra Ra Rasputin, owner of a nice pusheen. You know, or, or, or Ra Ra Rasputin cooks a damn good langoustine. Um, I think, I think, I think my favourite one was probably Ra Ra Rasputin really loves Avril Lavigne. Uh, so, so, so yeah, that, that standard madness really. Fine, just... Fine. This is how I'm spending lockdown, like a lot of other comics, talking shit into my own phone. How have I coped during lockdown? Um, I've actually been fine, there's plenty of work. I'm still writing from home, still consulting as a paranormal psychologist, uh, currently in the middle of a moving house, hence packing up my office. Um, but otherwise, it's, um, I've been okay. I still feel pressured, like I probably should have got more done than I have done, but hey, shops are still open and selling alcohol. The party goes on, even if it's only indoors. Um, but I do miss going to bars, uh, I miss Banshees, and I miss all of you guys. The Freak Easy's gone from pillar to post constantly. So we're having a little bit of a rough patch just now, but who isn't? Um, that's one of the things about the Freak Easy. We are still trying to support our friends who are able to do their creative endeavours in other ways. We do try to reshare and repost. We've got people on Twitch and we've had folk at the Edinburgh Horror Festival who have all put together little shows and other ways of getting through this lockdown. And the lockdown before that. And the lockdown before that. But no, that's my main project at the moment, trying to learn Cantonese. So you're working so, on, on that. I've been working on trying to get uh, some new Marshall Chip stuff off the ground. Because um, we got uh, an album finished last year. Uh, in the mm -hmm. brief period between lockdowns, we managed to get into the studio and finish an album that we recorded this time last year. And that came out in December. Uh, that is called May You Live in Interesting Times. And well, it's it's called... <laughs> Perfect title. We we picked that title before the pandemic. <laughs> because this this was our our big Brexit rant album, basically. <laughs> and then the times got even more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but we have we have got some we've got some some new stuff written. We've got about uh five or six things that are kind of there's, halfway in the works. The time you've been in lockdown, you've got another album to go. Yeah, well certainly an EP at least. Um mm -hmm. the trouble is we're at that stage where I need to get everybody else in the band involved to work on, on their parts, <laughs> and we can't meet up yet. It's going to be no. about six Well, hopefully there'll, we be time that. That, 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 there'll be, a, there'll be a, a grace period coming to you. Uh, yeah, that's, I think... a, that's a nice word, a grace period. I like that. That's good. Once, once nice. Glasgow goes down to level three, then we can, we can meet up again hmm. and get back to work. And what number are you at now? 76? <laughs> we're, at, we're at four full on lockdown yes <laughs> um, I mean I've just been standing in this corner with my synthesizer making music for the past however many months um, I've got some music uh, coming out soon and it's my birthday uh, in a couple of weeks time so I'm doing an online zoom show with a bunch of friends if anyone wants to come it's a charity show for friends of the earth so uh, do you find me on facebook Laurie Black and uh Keep on freaking on, everyone. <laughs> um, during the lockdown, I really had a change of uh, change of focus because um, I wasn't really that into doing the the Zoom shows. Um, it didn't really excite me as much, although I did a few. Um, so I started writing um, kids books, which is a big change of audience um, and a change of audience from the this freaky easy certainly. Um, but uh, one's already been published um, by by me and actually there it is 
if anyone's got kids, then there's my shameless plug. Um, look it up on, on Amazon or my website. And uh, I'm already writing the second one. So I'm, I'm trying to keep busy in this, uh, this very boring um, environment for entertainers. People like myself, I'm lucky enough to have a day job. So, you know, lockdowns just meant that I don't really have an artistic output anymore. So rather than a financial loss for me, it's very, very much a mental loss. I'm not hanging out with my theatre friends. I'm not creating in quite the same ways or in quite the same volume that I used to. I'm not having a good time of it. I'm not around audiences. I do not have that way to vent, to expand. And even when I am at home and things are going well, I have a wife and children and homeschooling and it's it's like being trapped in a submarine it's not time off it's just more different work and different stresses and it's as hard as anything but at least i get to get on with some writing in what little time i have with what's left of my mental resources after all of this so it's not a dead stop so all in all could be better could be far far worse so I'm having a little break, as I said, in front of my green screen. I am a green screen queen now, um, and that's what I shoot my digital performances on. I try and do one at least once a month. Um, it's just a lot of time and effort and stuff editing. Um, I'm trying to find digital shows to do them for, but if not, I post them on my YouTube, um, which is just Amy Lamore. Um, you can usually find my link tree on my Instagram, which is at Amy Lahore. If you want to go there, then you'll find all the links. So, like, I also do DJ sets once a month, like digital ones, just like hour long. Just try and get that like nightclub party feel that you can have in your room or your living room or whatever. Um, or if you're on a run, a lot of people have been like, "Oh, you, that mix got me going for my run," and I'm like, "You're welcome," you know. Um, keeping the the public healthy and fit. Woo. Um, so yeah, it's just been a riot, like just you know having digital content to create. Um, so yeah, as I said, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Mixcloud. It's all at Amy Lahore. Find me there. What projects am I currently working on? So. I have probably got two manuscripts on the go at the moment. Well, one is a collection of short stories called The Noctuary, um, and I'm due to start another much larger manuscript very soon, which is going to be non-fiction. I'm also currently part of the Battersea Poltergeist, uh, which is a podcast on BBC Sound, Spotify and iTunes. We are currently top 10. In fact, I think we're number two after Louis Theroux's podcast, and we're top 10 in the States at the moment as well, and that has been crazy an absolute whirlwind um so i'm still doing that at the moment and uh still consulting as a paranormal psychologist on lots of different things but at the moment i'm not really doing a lot unfortunately because of the world the way it is but as soon as the world is good again i will be out there making a fool of myself don't you worry about that but in the meantime i do appear occasionally on the turnbuckle throwbacks podcast which you can catch us on rant em radio uh, that's obviously it's a wrestling podcast between me and a few friends in america uh, and it's super good times turnbuckle throwbacks podcast on rant em radio right now i am doing recordings for my solo show elliot simpson a sexy and i know it which is a stand-up show entirely about asexuality uh, and that is going to be shown this year at the Norwich Fringe, it's going to be shown at the Glasgow Southside Fringe, it's going to be shown at the Brighton Fringe, the Edinburgh Fringe, and also the London Museum of Comedy, and possibly more if the world stops being on fire. Apart from that, uh, I'm, I'm also working on making more, hopefully more online live stream nights for my comedy the show, The Diversity Quota, uh, which is a Glasgow-based uh, diversity-themed comedy night. Uh, I'm working with my good friend Ian TC on more episodes of our drinking podcast, which is called The Smuff in Drinking History. <laughs> um, and also, I guess there's one final... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, and I guess for one last little, uh, <laughs> little, little uh, che che cheeky plug, um, uh, I am also uh, working on bringing out a book a book of all the rah-rah Rasputins that I, I previously mentioned. Yes, it, it, it's a, it'll be a book uh, with, with cartoon renditions of Rasputin parodies. 
117 rah rah raspy teens. Um, that, that will come out at some point when it is made, but I'm working on it. That's, that's what I'm up to. Um, that's, that's about it. That's about it. I'm trying to get back into gigging when I can. I've been doing a bit of writing for a friend's YouTube channel, been doing a bit of my own writing, starting to put together my thoughts for a project called Identity Crisis, in which I talk about my experiences of being mixed race and how that ties into being mixed race and goth and mixed race and all kinds of confusing and weird and unusual and just how hard it is to have an identity that seemingly shifts year on year as you learn new things about yourself about what you knew about your culture what you knew what you thought you knew and all of that stuff Happy birthday, Freak Easy, and all who's sailing her. So happy birthday to the Freak Easy Cabaret, and I hope to see you all very soon. What more could you ask for? Um, so happy birthday, Freak Easy Cabaret, and I can't wait to hang out with you again. I live in Edinburgh now, so hopefully it'll be easier for us to all hang out and do shows together. Happy birthday, Freak Easy. It's been a blast. I hope it continues to be a blast, and... I cannot wait to see you guys back on stage again and hopefully perform for you. Plug, plug, hint, hint, wink, wink, please. Happy birthday, Freak Easy, you weird, beautiful fucking thing. Um, I can't wait for us to be able to all get together and do shows again. Um, I can't wait to be distinctly not sober on a stage this close to having a nervous breakdown and calling it art. I love you guys and I'll see you very soon. Couldn't hate my choice, don't if I love. <laughs> Happy new Freak Easy year for Ben and a very happy birthday for me. I want to wish the Freak Easy a very special happy fifth birthday. Uh, you guys are my family. I'm very happy that you asked me to do this and I'm a part of your family too. Um, it's just times like these really show that we need to stick together as a community of performers, you know, drag, comedians. We all come together. We might do different shit, but it makes people laugh. It entertains. And that's what we're really here for at the end of the fucking day, is to uplift from this. We're going to need each other when we come out of this and we get the freak easy back. We'll get to actually celebrate probably the fifth and the sixth at once this time next year. And uh, it'll be nice to see some familiar faces, some new faces. And, you know, just have a fucking great time, you know? So stay freaky and, in my case, stay easy. <laughs> Happy birthday. Whatever you guys do today, I hope you have a good time. Unfortunately, we won't be here to help you celebrate, but as soon as the world is good again, we will be out there and we will party it up. Happy birthday, Freak Easy. Enjoy your day. Happy birthday, Freak Easy. Here's to five more years. A very, 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 very happy anniversary of your birth, Freak Easy Cabaret, and here's to many more shows in the future. Huzzah! I wonder if I'll go doing well at Freak Easy Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? I wonder if I'll go doing well at Freak Easy oh. Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? See I write the songs, they bother, yes I do it all the time Do they seem to have a problem with the rhythm and the rhyme? But I'm toiling with the music though And here's the funny thing I can barely play guitar And I can he sing I wonder if I'll go doing well at Freak Easy Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? I wonder if I'll go doing well at Freak Easy oh. Will you like me or think that I'm too cheesy? This gig could be quite difficult, it will need be a cinch. When you hear me singing, 
I hope you didn't flinch. I brought along my guitar, I should have brought my synth. Still I'm glad to be here, at the Banshee Labyrinth. I wonder if I'll go doing well at three keys. One more story. Um, after the, ha the first Halloween three keys that we've done, which involved stand-up horror from uh, Alexander, and Ash Price hammering a nail into his nose and a couple of strippers from the burlesque performer scene. Uh, two guys came up to me after they donated money to us and he looked at me and he just said, that was the strangest show I have ever seen in my life. And that's when I realized that the Freak Easy made its place in the world. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>